everyone, I'm Brian Parks from Shutterpilot, and in today's video, I want to talk about how you can connect your photo booth to the internet, even when you don't have a good Wi-Fi connection. You've probably seen some of these options, but I want to talk about some of the, the devices that I've used in the past, and some of the ones that I like better than, than some other ones. Back in the day, there was something called a uh, Jetpack. It was a product that Verizon made. Uh, and it was actually pretty good. It was it was a consumer product, uh, and basically it was a 3G or uh, 4G, uh, whatever was current at the time. It may have even been 2G when they started doing it, uh, but a, a cellular modem that also created a an, a local Wi-Fi network for whatever you wanted to connect to it. So in our case, photo booths, uh, we'd configure the computer to talk to the Verizon Jetpack, just connect it the same way we would can connect to any other Wi-Fi network, and rather than being a, a Wi-Fi access point connected to a hard line, it would just go straight to the cell network. Some of the other carriers, I checked AT&T and T-Mobile, I believe. Uh, they have uh, a similar product that, that does the same sort of thing, uh, but all of the carriers also have something that's uh, USB connected. So it's basically the same thing as the Jetpack device. The only difference is that instead of creating a Wi-Fi network, it plugs into the computer using USB. That's still okay, but there are a couple of reasons that I, I actually prefer the, the Wi-Fi network. Uh, one is the kind of the physical characteristics of it. So depending on how your photo booth is set up, it may be easier or more difficult to actually plug a USB uh, into the photo booth. Uh, your, your photo booth might have USB ports on the outside of the photo booth, and that's fine, um, but if you want to make sure that this doesn't get bumped and, and that sort of thing, it's a lot better to put it inside the enclosure of the photo booth. And depending on how your computer sits inside the actual enclosure, that may or may not be feasible. So that's, that's one of the reasons that I, I don't particularly care for the, the USB uh, devices. The second reason that I, I, I prefer the, the Wi-Fi devices over the USB devices is that uh, I've seen issues with drivers in the past. Uh, so being a USB device, it does require a driver, whereas Wi-Fi is uh, very st standardized. Your computer is going to be able to talk to Wi-Fi. That's not going to be an issue. The USB devices, uh, you're, you might run into uh, more issues there. When uh, Windows 10 was new, Windows 8 was kind of getting phased out. Uh, there were a lot of vendors that were, uh, th their drivers weren't quite ready for Windows 10 compatibility. Uh, so running on Windows 10, there were some issues. Windows 8 was a little more stable, uh, but there's still the potential for issues wh when, when you're uh, relying on drivers for USB devices. And then the, the final reason is just the uh, kind of the stability. And this is, this is, I can't point to any scientific reason why uh, these USB devices seem to be less stable uh, than uh, the, the Wi-Fi devices, but in my experience, the, the USB connected devices just feel a little bit less stable. Just from my experience, it feels like the USB connected devices are not uh, as rock solid as, as some of the other devices out there. Now, that's all uh, consumer grade devices, those the Wi-Fi devices and the the USB devices. Uh, there are also some uh, other devices that are kind of the next level up, uh, more for commercial grade, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, some, some of these devices are, are used for uh, permanent connectivity for remote locations, uh, so this is their primary I internet connection. Um, and in some places it's just used as an emergency backup, so they might have an actual hardline connection, but in the event that Comcast goes down, they want to have uh, connectivity through the cell network. Um, and so there are devices for that. Uh, my favorite, there, there are plenty of devices out there uh, that do this sort of thing, but my favorite is the Encore Network's uh, EN1000. Uh, it's, the bandwidth is enough that for what we're doing for photo booths, it'll work just fine, uh, but it, it uses a special mode on Verizon's network uh, that actually makes the data plan a little bit cheaper. Uh, that particular device is a Verizon only device, 
I think it might work on one or two of the other uh, carriers now, but back when I used it a couple years ago, it was Verizon only. Uh, there are other uh, devices that do similar things that work on some of the other networks, um, either on a kind of a scaled down bandwidth mode or your usual, your normal 3G or 4G uh, connection. So uh, I'll provide links in the description for some of the things that I talked about. Uh, and uh, if you have something that, that you really like using that does a similar job, feel free to comment below. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and check out our website for even more information. Thanks for watching.